Ladies and gentlemen, it is now 3.30. Let us begin our webinar this afternoon. Um, we are, our webinar to th this afternoon is on the proven steps in hiring and retaining the right people. My name is Leanne. I'm your moderator this afternoon from Profiles Asia. Uh, before we begin, let me start off with the usual housekeeping matters. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you have the attendee interface panel on the right-hand side of your screen, which you can expand and collapse at the click of the orange button on the top of the screen. Most of you, if not all of you, are muted uh, just to listen in for the webinar. However, you can still send us your questions or uh, any feedback over the chat box, which is located on the lower half of the attendee interface. Right, just some information about the webinar. This is a 30-minute session, which includes question and answers at the end. Uh, we have a attendee list, but it's hidden uh, with your personal information that's hidden away from the others, just to safeguard your privacy. Now, uh, for those who have attended the seminar or signed up for it, you will actually receive a copy of the slides and the recording for the session. And again, today's topic is on the proven steps in hiring and retaining the right people. So before I introduce my speaker this afternoon, let me tell you a little bit about a complimentary critical job study that we are giving to all our attendees who are interested in receiving it, of course. Uh, just to say thank you for coming on board this afternoon. Uh, to join, to take up this study is very easy, as easy as one, two, three. All you need to uh, do is just identify rather a critical job position in your organization. Uh, we will then take over to assess the job incumbents and do the rest of the job study. Okay, so from this study, we will identify what is really required for success in any given job within your organization. And we will assess individuals in the areas of learning, reasoning, communication, problem solving potentials, behaviors, and occupational interests. Okay, what? you will see from this study is that people we can graphically and quantifiably compare and this results will give you will have extreme uh, very good well severe implications rather sorry on the selection development coaching and succession development that you have in mind for these individuals so we'll talk a little bit more about this study at the end of the webinar but first let me introduce you to today's presenter, Mr. Henji Santos, who is our director for Profiles Asia. He is responsible for operations, management, and growing key accounts in Singapore. Now, he comes with 16 years of experience in the field of business, hospitality, training, academia, educational, administration, and consulting. He has a BSc in HR and an MSc in Industrial and Organizational Psychology and the Management of Human Resource from the City University of New York Zickling School of Business. Now, Mr. Santos is an associate member of the Society for Industrial Organizational Psychology, or SIO, which is a division within the American Psychological Association, and has an organizational affiliate of the, of the Association for Psychological Science. Wow. He is also a lifetime membership awardee of the Beta Sigma Gamma Sigma International Honor Society. So please join me in welcoming Mr. Henji Santos to speak for us. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction, Leanne. Very good afternoon to everyone, and thank you for taking the time to join us this afternoon. And it's a nice day today in Singapore, and we have a couple of attendees which are not new to us, and also uh, attendees all the way back uh, in China, in Japan, and, and a lot of you are from Singapore. And I would like to wish everyone a happy Chinese New Year. Gong Si Fa Chai to everyone. This is our first webinar of the Chinese Lunar Calendar Year. And we are very excited to always share a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Now, just a little bit of quick check if you could hear me loud and clear. And in addition, um, I would just like, as, as what Lian mentioned, that you have a chat box. You could just uh, mention, for the sake of the Chinese New Year, just uh, type in if you could hear me loud and clear. But then I want you to type in Huata. 
Um, and for those of you who didn't, uh, who might be wondering what this "wat ha" is, a it's a it's a colloquial term, uh, which generally um, loosely meaning a prosperous and have more money. And usually, this is being mentioned during the Chinese New Year, being celebrated here in Singapore and the rest of Asia. Okay, now, okay, great. Now I can see some of you is typing in the chat box and you could be able to hear me loud and clear. Now, first, I would like to do my obligatory uh, two minutes to tell you a thousand foot overview of who we are and what we do and how we do it in Profiles International. Now, we represent the fastest growing and the leading assessment and human capital solution company worldwide. We help our clients create a high performance workforce and we help them essentially to reduce hiring mistake, decrease employee turnover, increase the workforce productivity, and help them develop outstanding leader in their organization. Now, what makes us unique is our ability to provide actionable information and the state of the art system and technology used throughout the employee life cycle. We have been in the business for more than 20 years with a representation in over nearly 130 countries worldwide. Now, there are over 50 million users of our products, and we have served over 45,000 clients, ranging from small, medium enterprise to Fortune 500 companies. And most of our products are available in 33 different languages, and they are also locally validated for reliability and accuracy. Now, we have a pleasure to work with a diverse marquee clients from various industries, ranging from manufacturing, healthcare, hospitality, and business services, just to name a few. And currently, we have global, global clientele of over 11,000 active customers. Now, we are proud of the work that we do and the achievements of our, especially the achievements of our clients. And we have numerous case studies to substantiate the kind of things that we talk about here in our webinar. And I highly encourage you to seek out our case studies, which you can find in our website. Now, <coughs> excuse me, why we are here, basically our main purpose today is to share with you the proven steps in identifying and hiring the right people the first time, and these are practical, realistic, and scalable way of taking out the guesswork in a hiring and promotion process. And we also touch on the topic of how to create and implement a leadership strategy that is measurable return on investment of you as a manager, as a hiring manager, as a manager and leader. And we will also show you how to effectively develop and retain your top performers using actionable information. And lastly, I would like to share with you uh, three client case studies and success stories just for your uh, perusal of the kind of things that we help our clients in our day in and day out job in creating a high performance workforce for them. Now, okay, have you ever hired someone who looks good on paper but end up as a disappointment? Now, as a start, I would like to get a sense and my colleague Leanne would like to take a poll and if you could be able to answer this question, so you can have a sense here of whether you have experienced this one. So we are getting some votees or votes for the questions. Just a few more minutes when everybody has. Uh, <coughs> indicated their answers with hmm. the click of a button, either in the yes or the no box. Wow. Okay. All right. Just one more minute. Yeah. <laughs> the, the poll is not closed yet. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Yeah, I can see some results coming in and they're coming in real fast. Ms. Leanne. <clears throat> okay. Let's close the poll. Thank you very much. And maybe we can share the results. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> okay, yeah. So basically, eighty percent of uh, of you, well, eighty. Now it's a uh, eighty percent of our attendees have hired someone who looks good in paper, end up as a disappointment, and uh, it's quite surprising that there's one who haven't um, experienced this kind of thing. Well, good for you. Now, okay, thank you for uh, participating in our chat and our poll. Now. If I were to tweak this question, have you ever made a conscious decision to hire a non-performer? 
Of course, the answer would be a definite no. So how then do so many poor performers get hired in our organization? Now, to answer that question, let's begin with the examination of the traditional hiring process as practiced by most employers today. Now, this is a process that has from one to two, three components. Now, the first component is reviewing or checking the past. These are historical information. Determining the skill fit, and then it consists of reviewing the candidate's resume, past employment, educational qualification, personal references, and maybe a background check for verification. Now, the problem with this traditional approach is that people have a tendency to embellish their qualification. Now, according to the Society of Human Resource Management, 53% uh, of resumes they have reviewed contains false information. And a scary thing is 49% of managers caught the job applicant fabricating their resume, and 34% of all application forms contains lies. And the others who don't embellish their resumes may lie during an interview. Now, the workplace is full of people vying either to get hired or to get promoted to the next level. And in a game of relatively high stakes, many people will ignore the risk of lying in order to compete for a position. As Peter Drucker, the well-known author and management consultant and guru, productivity guru, has said that up to 66% of a company's hiring decision will prove to be a mistake within 12 months. And he also lists the top three reasons for this uh, this reason that people fail are dishonesty, incompetence, and incompatibility. Now, to help prevent this from happening, most companies add the second component, the company fit, which deals with the present. The information gathered here are attitudinal, perception, values, appearance, and demeanor of the candidates, and they're usually determined in a job interview. Now, ever, now however, the information gathered in the interview revolves around the first impression uh, on a candidate presents. And our judgments are generally based on gut feeling, appearance, and personality. Now, unfortunately, we try to get all this information in a very short time period. Now, some of the biases operating during this time are what we call the similar to me effect, where just because we came in the same university, people would have a tendency to be more lenient and more receptive of the candidate. We also judge the way they speak, the halo effect, the first impression we get from the candidate tend to cloud our judgment, which leads us to an instinctive hiring decision that we can later regret. Now, uh, a statistic uh, uh, study conducted by SHRM found that 63% of hiring decisions are made during the first 4.3 minutes of an interview. As a consequence of this traditional approach, organizations end up losing an equivalent of 30% of annual employee salary as a result of bad, of bad hire. Now, to illustrate this point, let's look at some of the shocking HR statistics on the cost of turnover. Now, it takes about 11,000 to replace a salaried employee, more than 50,000 for a mid-level employees, and as much as 250000 for a senior level executive. Now, this is the amount of dollars going down the drain whenever we are losing, especially top quality peoples within our organization. You know, but guess what? The CFO does not measure such stuff because what they are interested in is our, you know, is our payroll on target, is our compensation and benefit on target. And sad to say, many HR fail to communicate this to executives, they are still busy collecting anecdotal evidences of their talent acquisition and management practices. Now, I would like you to think of the cost of your last hire. Now, aside from the salary and benefits, there's a cost of advertising for the job, the investment in training, and the price of getting a new worker up to speed, right? Now, the, an organization wouldn't spend we, I mean, wouldn't spend forty to fifty thousand in a piece of equipment as an investment without a careful understanding of what the equipment or technology can do, the rigorous selection process, the proper training, documentation, and warranties, and so and so forth. Right. So now, hence the need of the third component. This is what we call the cornerstones of 
performance, which is the job match. It is the most important but least understood element of the hiring process and can only be achieved by assessing both the job and the individual. Now remember, the only way we can make our best hiring decision is to consistently use all these three components. Now, namely the historical information or the skill fit derived from resume, past employment, education, and background checks, and the company fit, uh, which is, takes place during the interview, which takes into consideration your intuition or gut feel, appearance and personality. And now remember, this is where most hiring decisions are made. Now, the third component, which is the job match, which is the most important, which deals with what matters most to the success of an organization. And that is the people that match to their job. Now, let, let me substantiate this with some statistics. Now, did you know that the conventional and unstructured interview conducted by the average person, just like you and me, provide only 14% of the information you need to make a good hiring or promotion decision? Now, would you feel confident making such predictions on the basis of interview alone, where the statistics suggest that you'd get one in every seven hit rates? Of course not, right? But let me show you how to triple the success rate you get when you're doing interview alone. Now, uh, folks, I would like you, this, uh, as usually every session, I'd like to be, make it interactive. Could you please get any coin in your, at your desk, on your pocket? Um, and let's have a quick uh, demo here. Please take out a coin and place that coin in the nail of your thumb. Now what you then do is, the next time you hire, simply flip the coin in the air and say, heads up, he gets the job until he doesn't. And you'll get 50% of the time a good hiring decision, which is three times more effective than using the old fashioned unstructured interview alone. Now, some of you might have your smiles on your face, but seriously, you need more information to make effective predictions of superior performance when you place people into your job. Now, let me show you a chart, okay, that shows the efficiency of variety of methods that you can use in the selection process. It indicates that people selected on the basis of typical job interview are good hires only about 14% of the time. Not a very good record, isn't it? Now, that's just one good employee for every seven people hired. Now, but as you add another selection technique, such as reference or background check, personality and abilities test and assessment, it, the probability and odd goes up to 54%. Now, if you include the occupational interest and the job matching, the odds go as high as 75% of the time further validating the need for the third component, which I mentioned earlier. Now, the reason this is so important is because you must see the total person. Now, in seeing the total person, um, you can get a far more deeper understanding of the person and you are far more likely to increase your hiring success up to 75%. Now, I'd like to compare people as just like as an iceberg. You know, this is what you see, but there is more beneath the surface than the above. So basically, when you have to make decision based on inadequate information, information, you're bound to make hiring decision you'll later regret. You know, that reminds me of the traditional, you know, the, the definition of insanity, which is doing the same thing over and over and expecting the result to be different. Now, the traditional method for hiring people is never going to make you give you a better result. No matter how good you get at it, you will have to change the hiring formula before you can expect consistently better results. Now, when you use the traditional system of selection, all you have is the tip of the iceberg. This is good, but limited information. It does not give you a picture of the total person. Now, to get the essential information for making a better hiring decision, you must look at beneath the surface and get the complete picture of the job candidate. Now, there is this phenomenon okay, happening in organization where A players hire B players, and B players hire C players, and C players hire D players. 
So until it becomes an organization full of Z players or it becomes a Z company. And when this happens, this is what I call as the bozo explosion. You wouldn't want to let this happen, you know? Those who are in charge and hiring, okay, and getting the people, okay, in their organization, you will be partly responsible in this when this happens. But seriously, folks, um, this is how important it is. Now, now, how do we solve this problem? Now, <clears throat> first off is you need to start with the best ones that you got. For every people in your organization, you should identify first the results. Define their performance. What are the results that your best people produce that is aligned to your business strategy and business outcome? Second thing is know their potential. What makes them unique that allows them to be successful in their position? And third is you have to develop their competencies. Show them the behaviors that will allow them and make them be successful day in, day out in, their organ in your organization. Now, you have to identify objective measures. First off is rate the leader or manager or people who's top performers and analyze who are the top, bottom, and middle performers. Objective measures of performance. Why objective measure of performance? As Stephen Covey said, begin with the end in mind because you will get what you measure and what measure gets done. Now, in identifying this critical objective measures, they could be such as project delivered on time and on budget, just to give you some example, sales per month, per quarter, per annum, if it is in a sales position, um, you can include average profit margin per account. And if they are in a example, in an industry where it's a call center industry, team calls handled per month, and if it is in a manufacturing, units manufactured per month. And you can also include your supervisor's rating on their performance. So this is how you identify the objective measures. Now, the second thing is you have to know who among the people has the potentials. Now, how do you do it? Now, remember, every success is different from one company to the other. What makes you successful in your, in your previous job or in previous, uh, in previous company would not simply be a good indicator that it will be the same thing that will make you successful. So you need to ask these three questions. Can they do the job? How will they do the job? And are they motivated to do the job? Now, <clears throat> these are the sort of things that one of our assessment tools answers, which is the Profile XT. We can measure anything that can be measured in a person except for their learning skills. Now, the Profile XT that I would like to share with you measures three key groupings of characteristics from thinking styles, interests, and behavioral traits as part of the evaluate, evaluating who an individual is and how well they will fit into a particular job. The PXT collects the sort of information to measure the total person information you need to have before you put anyone into a job. Now, it tells you exactly whether employees can deal with the mental demands of the position, their thinking and problem solving and communication abilities. Now, it tells you, um, are they going to be comfortable with the demands of the position makes on them as a person? How will they behave in the environment in which they will work in? And what would be their natural behavioral tendencies? And importantly, it can also show you whether they will be motivated and are really uh, love what, would love what they're doing and would love and aspire to do their job. So <clears throat> at the heart of the profile XT is the, our performance model or the success profile built for each position. All applicants and employees may be compared with the appropriate performance models to identify critical areas to consider when placing and working with that individual. Now, this success profile process represents an effective approach that minimizes the time required to efficiently describe a job, the people, and the good matches. And once you have identified what is necessary for success or the results in any position, you can start building the performance model. Now, the model consists of a range of 10 scores or scale of 10 scores for behavioral traits and thinking styles, where the scores of the most effective performance tend to fall. 
Now, the farther outside this range a score falls, the less likely they will be a good fit of the individual to the job. The identified rank interest scales at the lower half are listed based on the interest ranked by those most successful in the position and the greater the degree of alignment between the individual's top interest and the top three in the performance model, the higher the percent match for the interest and the results are presented as a percent match to a specific performance model. Now, these are great information you can get in no other way, okay? And this will not be visible at, at like in an interview or in a resume uh, screening. And yet it could be the difference between the conspicuous success and dramatic failure in any position. Now, having done this, we can show you graphically and quantifiably to what degree a current employees or candidates for recruitment or promotion match that success profile standards. And we will make it easy for you to quickly identify when individuals fit well in the job uh, and position and when they may have to make adjustment. So this information is important, which has implication for job placement, job training, and allows for identification and presentation of specific interview questions for applicants and coaching comments for incumbents. Now, considering the cost of hiring and developing people, you simply cannot afford to start with someone who is not likely to succeed. Now, the third component and the final step in the process is you have to develop their competencies. What is it that these people who has the potentials needed to do to be successful in their day in and day out job? Now, we all heard the saying that People don't quit jobs. People leave people or they quit people. And the people they quit are usually the managers. Okay, Put great people in an animal of a leader or a manager and they will leave or they will fail. Now, and you know that and everyone knows that. All things being equal, if you're working for an idiot, you leave that job. And in particularly in a market which is uh, scarce with talent such as Singapore, we're just going to be back to the same old rat race of chasing after the best folks in the market. Now, our research has shown that these are the key competencies for every manager and leader to be successful, which are the communication, leadership, adaptability, relationship, task management, production, development of others, and personal development. These are the sort of things our Checkpoint 360 competency feedback system measures about every leader and manager in your organization. And they are eight universal leadership and management competencies supported by 18 skill sets and 70 unambiguous behaviors that is shown to be critical in the day-to-day -day business environment. The Checkpoint 360 tells you the things based on the required competencies and how well they have been perceived by the people who work for them work with them and including their bosses. It zooms in to granular information so you can be able to compare the things that they should be doing to be successful because you cannot risk leaving your personal development to chance. Planning is essential. So how many times have you stated to yourself or others your intention to act but fail to but fall back into the old habits well, leaders follow through on the development plans when the leadership need is directly linked to a business challenge or pain point. Now, there is some actionable reports that will be generated, which is a standalone report that is designed and it talks to about the, their individual development plan, a self-awareness report helping them know more about themselves, as would any other project or business plan. It is realistic. It consists of actions you can take, every day on a job and tied directly to organizational priorities. Now, there is also a report that talks to the boss or the coaching and management considerations. These are suggestions in which we may help the boss on how to effectively help the manager grow and develop in the job. Now, this information that we provide are what we call the touch points of leaderships. Because folks, there is a complete difference between the power of talking to your people and versus the talking with them, having a dialogue and feedback versus 
talking to them. So we can provide information that would allow you to be in that moment with your employees and managers. Setting the right tone of dialogue that is aligned to their development areas and things that they keep, the, you know, the things uh, that they should start doing, stop doing, and keep doing. Then, of course, you need to know what's happening across the organization because you don't want to be spending money on training or development initiatives without knowing that is, it is directly contributing to the results, the things that you hired them to get. Now, then we provide the organizational management analysis or the executive overview, which is a report that talks to the executive or CEO, uh, CEO's alignment with this vision of what are the things that the management or leadership team ought to be doing. And these are the critical skill sets needed to be successful on the job. The report that allows the CEO to know whether they are on the same page with their leadership team. Now, what are the correlations of the top folks and what they are doing in common? These are some of the things that we can also provide. Things that my leader, you know, things such as these are the things that my leaders are doing really well. And these are the things that they need to be focusing on. And this is how we determine the critical skill sets and develop the competencies of every employees and managers and leaders with your organization. And finally, we review it annually we can be able to show you the comparison of whether you have actually closed those gaps on those areas identified. Now, let, let's, let's take a step back uh, a little and um, tell you what is possible based on the three success uh, studies that we have from our three uh, clientels from the chemical industry, insurance, and medical device manufacturing industry. First up is Eastman. Now, the, the company have been a, near, around nearly 100 years in a manufacturing chemical uh, products, which uh, serves 40 countries worldwide, and they pride themselves as a company with a high performance culture. Now, a senior executive quoting that it's a shift from the low performing thinking to maybe they are not in the job and we should find them a better fit. Now, that is super. It is a mentality shift, and by applying data from the PXC, I can figure out that if poor job fit is the case, I can help them go into a different job and do better. Another <clears throat> um, clientele would be BART, which uh, a century-old manufacturing manufacturer of medical device engage uh, profiles to improve their retention of their top salespeople in addition to improving their productivity, which as a result, after one year of implementation with the Profile XT, um, the annual sales increased to an average of 233, nearly 234,000 per sales rep uh, as compared to the previous, which is 169,000 per sales rep. The Profile XT assessment helped increase Bard Medical's critical care sales by on an average 65,000 uh, per sales rep, which is a 28% annual increase. Now, um, lastly, which is a global insurance company, which engaged Profiles International uh, in a productive relationship to improve their associate performance and reduce their turnover. Their main challenge particularly is how to identify top performers and improve selection process and sustain a turnover rate below industry average. Now, as a, as a result of this uh, working together, uh, we have reduced voluntarily turnover rate to just 6%, which is well below the 10% industry average. Furthermore, the professional level employees representing a substantial portion of the company's talent and investment show a turnover rate of only 1.6%. Now, um, and of, of course, there's a lot more things to share, but let, let me summarize uh, to you our session for today, um, which is the proven steps to hire and retain the right people. Now, first up, you need to identify the results and define the performance. Next is know their potentials, what makes them unique, that allows them to be successful in the position, and lastly, show them the competencies. Show them the behaviors that will be successful, that will allow them to be successful in the job. Now, 
Folks, a key strategic advantage for most companies is the performance of their employees. Now, employees who are well-matched to their positions have higher attendance records, less turnover, higher job satisfaction, and superior job performance. Both the employee and the employer share the benefits of this enhanced person-to-job fit. Now, that said, I would like to summarize the session with a quote by J.W. Marriott, which is, put the right person in the right job, train and motivate them, give them an opportunity for advancement, and your company will grow and prosper. Now, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to uh, be with us in this session. Before I uh, take a step back, uh, because I will be uh, present with a question and answer later if you have anything for us, uh, I would like to hand you over back to my colleague, Leanne. Thank you, Leanne. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Santos, very much for your 30-minute presentation. Now, uh, just for the folks who just missed our earlier complimentary critical job study offer, here it is again. Now, for all those who have signed up for this webinar, you can get this as a way of uh, from us to say thank you for joining us and all you need to do is to identify a critical job position within your organization and then we'll take over because we'll assess the job incumbents and complete the rest of the job study for your organization. Now, as mentioned earlier, we'll assess the individuals in several areas uh, which include learning, reasoning, uh, communication, problem solving, behaviors, and their occupational interests. Okay, so this would, we will really be going into finding out what is required for success in any given job in your organization. And what this means for you is that people, the people that you selected for this study, can be graphically and quantifiably compared to the top performers in your organization. And this will have important implications when it comes to selecting, development coaching and even succession development for these individuals. So if you would like to receive a complimentary job study from us, what you have to do is I'm going to launch the poll in the next few seconds and you can indicate either yes or no. And for those who would like to be part of or would like to enjoy this study, you can click yes and we will be in touch with you in the next few days to find out more about how we can work with you for this job study, right? So just a few more seconds while our votes come in. Okay, thank you very much. We'll now close the poll and continue with questions. If you have questions, you can use the chat box at the lower half of the attendee interface uh, panel on the right hand side of the screen. Just click the chat box, it will open up and you can type your question in. I think we have a quick question for Mr. Santos, uh, looking at the time schedule, if we just take one question. Um, there is a question from a Bobby in Singapore uh, who would like to know how and when you will know that you made a hiring mistake. <laughs> Mr. Santos? Oh, one of the best questions I always get is that. I think it's a very, very intuitive that we would definitely know. I mean, in, in, in previously, we could be able to know uh, six or normally six to one year, whether we have really made hiring mistakes on the individual. But essentially, um, it won't take that long at this point in time. Usually, in the first month, we know by ourselves whether or not we have made those hiring decision. Now, the, 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 the thing is, uh, we'll never know in an objective manner whether we really have made the hiring decision uh, because we didn't have any uh, benchmark that we have compared them against with dur during the time that we are hiring them. So, yeah, and uh, so that's, that's in, in, in all essence, we would, it won't take us that long. <laughs> So I hope that I answered that question, Bobby. Okay. Well, basically, we all know whether we have made that hiring mistakes. <laughs> okay, let's hope we don't make too many in the near future with your help. All right, uh, that's our question and answer for this afternoon since we're running short time. We'll take the rest uh, over emails. Or rather, yeah. we'll answer the other questions over emails. And if you'd like to, uh, please remember to download our white papers through our website. 
um, for those who have indicated interest in our job survey, we'll be in touch with you again shortly. So with this, we'd like to end the webinar for this afternoon. Thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing you in our next session. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone.